guys, welcome back to Team Psychic Size. Uh, we're going to be here recording a video of our top 10 decks for the upcoming Hartford Regional Championships in about two weeks. And just to let you know, if you're paying attention to the European Regionals, um, we're recording this at the time of day one just finished, so if there's some wacky deck, we haven't seen decks, and uh, we don't know if, say, Crabominable wins, uh, we will not be in the know about that. So, we don't have a ton of time, so let's just hop right into the list, or the, yeah, the list of decks. So, at number 10, we have Decidueye Ninetales. As far as I know, going into round 9, that's as far as I know. Um, for the European Regionals, the deck was 6-1-1. And uh, uh, if it wasn't for misplay, it would be either 7-1 or 7-0-1. So, uh, yeah, it's in day 2, I believe. Uh, and um, it's a really strong deck. It has decent matchups against most of the field. It fares okay against Guardi. It like 50-50s Guardi. Um, has a, about 50-50 against things like uh, Nine Tails. Um, definitely beats Greninja, which we are estimating as a pretty good deck right now. Yes. Um, it fares. It, it doesn't beat Metagross, honestly, but um, besides that, it, it has decent matchups throughout the field. Um, you might think it's bad because we lost Forest of Giant Plants, but you still have Rare Candy and stuff, and once again, it does beat some of the top decks like Greninja, which I believe Ethan's solitaring right now. Yup. Solitaire and Greninja. It's the one deck that you actually need to solitaire. Oh, yeah. But, um, I think we're gonna go number nine slot. At number nine, we have ho oh so It's more oh, than oh, a meme. It's been winning League Cups left and right. It 50-50s Guardi. No matter what you might think, you just turn one key away and then just smash everything, and you need, like, one choice bin and one steam up, and you can kill a fully powered-up Guardi. It's Liddy. Um, and it, like, against... The other rest of the field, it does good against Metagross, Galissapod. Um, it even fares decent against um, Greninja, because it's really tough for Greninja to deal with Ho-Oh. Yeah, especially with Ho-Oh not being weak to water. Yeah, you just um, don't bench down a lot one, of your water you, weak you, Pokemon. You limit your Salazzles in play. And your um, And Turtle Meters. Okay. It's a really strong deck. Yeah. Uh, what else does it fare well against? Um... Things like, uh, Decidueye. yeah, Decidueye, Vicavolt, Bulu. It, it, it's very strong right now, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if I played it honestly for Hartford. It's it's still on my radar, not one of my top picks, but it's still on my radar. Don't play Ho -Oh Salazzle. Don't throw your regionals down the drain. Yeah, well, what would you play if you were going? Yeah, for those who don't know, Ethan can't go because he's Jewish and it falls on the weekend of um, Yom Kippur. I just wanted to just stop there and just say he can't go because he's Jewish. Um, but yeah, it's on Yom Kippur. But if I was going, um, my cusp is between three decks right now. Um, it's We'll go over one. that at the end. We'll go over top three picks. Yeah, I'll, I'll go over that and what I'd play once we get up to the top. Um, okay, so at number 8, I believe we have Vicavolt Bulu, if I'm correct? Yeah, um, Vicavolt Bulu has been a really, really strong deck now. Now that it's become more of a slower format, um, this, this slower, more candy-based deck that I'm playing right now, um, it's Honestly, it may have been made for post-rotation, like, since September 1st has happened, because, um, one of the best lists was, um, John Roberts' list that he played for, um, Internets, and I believe that had, um, it didn't play via Seeker, and it had, like, I believe two cards that were not legal post-rotation in the entire deck. Uh. So, it, it's definitely a very strong play right now. I personally wouldn't be one to play it after those who watch the channel know that I bombed internets with it and I dead drew 50% of my rounds, so I wouldn't play it, but it wouldn't be a horrible play if you can get it more consistent than I got it. Okay, so now what is number 7 on the list? 
For number seven, we have Golisopod variants. Golisopod variants, whether it be Garb, the new and upcoming uh, Weavile variant. Uh, Zoroark variant. What, in your opinion, is the best of the variants? Garb by far is the best variant for yeah. Golisopod in this more format. Definitely, definitely. Because um, a lot of people say the new and upcoming Weavile thing is good. But in my opinion, Garb is just better. It's better to do, um, it's better to shut off the abilities than just do $60 Pokemon that have them, including your own. I think the best part about the deck is the Energy, so you can play Magirna, which is my hot tech in the deck. Yeah. The other thing about Golisopod Garb, um, shout out to uh, the people at, I believe it's the Slowpoke Well podcast, for letting me know this. This is what Golisopod is like. So, you're at a League Cup with it, say. And um, you're up like two prizes to six. And then you get end down to, or you're up two prizes to six, and you're looking at your friends like, see you in an hour, see you in cut, this is going to be great. And then you just get end of two and you draw nothing for the rest of the game. Because there's so many cards in it that when you get end late game, it's so bad. Yeah, it's very, very bad like, late game. <coughs> and you just like, you just like, okay, 30, pass, 30, pass. And then they're like, okay, now I can build up my turn and do what I need to do. And kill you. You can't do anything about that. Yeah, so. but Glow Spot's still really strong in a lot of matchups. There's still a lot of matchups where you can be able to sweep if they can't hit the end. I mean, it got second at Worlds for a reason, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very solid deck. It's got a lot of strengths to it. It's, it's, it's very not, strong all around. Yeah, so it's going to be a big contender um, in this upcoming season uh, and for Connecticut. Um, at number six, we have Volcanion. Good old Volcanion. Yeah. Volcanion, a lot of people are saying Holo Salazzle's better than it. Volcanion struggles in the late game. Salazzle's the way to go. I honestly don't feel that way, because Fury Bolts are just so good in the deck. Volcanion's by far more consistent and better against things like um, Metagross, Guardi, because um, you require less energies. Yeah. I mean, I just think overall it's stronger, because you can go, okay, double steam up. Choice Bander or Fury Belt, I'll hit you for like 190 or 200 or all these high, crazy high numbers and get all of these fast acceleration and especially a slower meta that in certain decks, um, when certain decks struggle early game, Volcano just takes off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, at number five. Should we go into Volcano in more detail though? I mean, we can't just say that. I mean, Volcano and its matchups across the field. Things like Metagross, it does good. Guardi can win 40 to 45 percent of the time, depending on how good of a list you've constructed. Yeah. Um, it doesn't beat things like our Ninja, but it can always beat things like. A lot of people aren't expecting Volk, and I think you can get away with playing it to really, really good finishes because a lot of people are like, "Oh, Volk's not that big. I'm gonna play Metagross. I'm gonna play Galissapod. I'm gonna play some wacky Lorantis thing or something." No. No. Lorance's Garb, it's the play. Top four to League Cup in seniors. Don't play Lorance's Garb if you're watching this. Don't, don't, don't throw away regionals. It would have won the League Cup, except it prized two Lorantis in game three. Sir, I, I don't need excuses. It was not me for the record. I like playing meme decks, but not things like that. Uh, I actually won that League Cup. Vespa Quinn Bisharp. So you admit to Homo Salazzle being a meme? No, Holo Salazzle's not a meme because I haven't played it. Ah, uh, uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, but I think overall, the matchups are very solid. Uh, as I'm saying, the slow format, uh, it's a fast deck and can, oh, and, and can accelerate very well in the early game. Uh, yeah. I think we went into good detail on that deck. Uh, yeah. We can go to number five. We're already, um, we're already five of the decks way through and we have ten minutes. We've only got on this for ten minutes. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Good pace. Don't have to waste your time watching us. Um, all right. Uh, no, five, <laughs> we have Nine Tails. Now, Nine Tails is really, really interesting. Oh, I'll give you a fun story. So, I broke right into a new cup today. And um, I actually ended up going um, 0 2 1. Um, 
was that I played two Ninetales with the Greninja. I mean, the Garantina. Oh, God. Ooh, Greninja, um, that's a pretty spicy tech for Ninetales. Uh, it's hot. I, I, I played it in my Ninetales list. Um, but, like, it's, it's it was really good, and um, it really helps the matchup a lot. And then you just go, okay, I'll Coco Spread, and now everything you have on your field after you want duplicates is in one shot range for me. Yeah. But, Gotcha. Sorry, could you repeat that? Your like technical went crazy for a sec. Sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. I was just saying that uh, you can combo spread in the matchup, and it makes the um, it makes it so much more annoying and so much more difficult. Yeah, it's definitely a solid matchup for Nine Tails. It's like fifty-five, forty-five to sixty, forty over Greninja, and it has solid matchups across the board too. I mean. It doesn't necessarily beat Metagross, but at 50-50 is Guardi. It, um, it does decent against Greninja, as we said. Um, Vicavolt Bulu is 50-50 for it. It has a lot of 50-50s, and it's a very skill-intensive deck that you have to be good to play. Yeah. Um, overall matchups, it, can, it loses mainly to Gardevoir, because you just go galley, sleep, and then they can't answer you. No, you can 50-50 Guardi. What? You can 50-50 Guardi with Ninetales. You can. It's, it's, it's hard to know. I feel like um, two baby Ninetales is a way to help the matchup. It helps your Metagross matchup as well. A little bit. But like, yeah, but they still like... just go with Metang and they go Corbin for 160 discard one metal. Yeah. Um, but it's the matchup's really iffy, but, um, needs stuff like Volcanion, and goes through other stuff as well. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's a decent deck, I wouldn't be surprised if I played it, um, but it's not, like, the best deck in format. I feel like it's good, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't blow your eyes out. It's not BDIF, not even close. There's so many more decks over it's that still, It's play. still a good deck that can um, come in at the number 5 slot. Yeah, I think it's good, but I don't think it's your optimal 100% play. Yeah, so what do we have as number 4? At number 4, we have Garb Variants. You want to talk a little about that? Yeah, so right now, um, Garb is still my number 1 play for Hartford. So, Ethan made the spicy list with um, another teammate, Ryan. Um, of, uh, this, uh, here, uh, Necrozma Toolbox Garb that we call Metatoxic because it's toxic to the meta. Um, it's, it has, like, a one of Drampo, one of Necrozma, um, one of, of a lot of things, and, like, two Coco Promo for spread. It's really solid. It plays, like, three Potown. Yeah, it's very, it's very counterish to the meta we have right now. Yeah, because it can be it can beat Metagross, it can beat Volk. It like fifty fifties Metagross and Volk, and then like slightly favor like fifty five forty five Scardi. Yeah, I think it's just overall the one problem the deck is really the dead drawing. But besides that, yeah, it's the, probably the most inconsistent Garb variant. Well, let's yeah. go on to some other Garb variants too. Um, what do you think about Drampa Garb? How would you play it? Would you play like a little more of a spread version? Would you play like Potowns in your Drampa Garb list? Would you play uh, Rainbows? I play Rainbow and Potown in my Drampa Garb list for the sole purpose that you have Magearna. So, Magearna's really good in that list. Yeah. I think that's definitely a really solid play. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if I played something like uh, Drampa Garb with Magearna. I mean, it beats Guardi. Because you have Garbatoxin, you can like 50 50 Metagross. Yeah. You can still be Ninetales, like, um. Ninetales is actually slightly more, um, is a slightly better matchup now because of Potown. Um, so it gives them the extra damage on them where you can one-shot them with the Berserk. Yeah. So, that's really solid. And you have Magearna for Ninetales too. Drampagarb, now that I'm, now that we're explaining it, I'm kind of questioning why it's not higher, <laughs> honestly. Um, I don't, I think it's not higher for the Soul Purpose that Guardi's a thing. Uh, yeah. it struggles with Guardi. Yeah, true. Uh, um, since they just go, okay, I play my items, Twilight, now you can't do anything. Oh, nice Drampa there, you can't one-shot me. Okay. Um, so, and all you do 
could do is just go with DC Secret Spring and you can kill an opposing trap pot. Yep. So it's really not that big of a deal. And lastly, Espeon Garb. Is that... I think that's the worst out of all of them, just because... Guzmo was printed and Acerola was printed, so it basically shuts off what Espeon likes most, which is Confusion. Yeah, I think that after Guzmo was printed, um, the meta really shifted away from Espeon for Worlds, and I think rightfully so it did, and um, I think that um, that with Guzmo being a 2-3 to three of it every single deck, even 4 of the other thing about yeah, the other thing about SBN Garb too is because of Guardi, people are playing decks that don't require smashing a lot of energies on them, which is really bad for Espeon. Yeah. So I feel like Espeon Garb's the worst out of all the Garb variants, and let's just get into the top three. And since we seem to not have a super long video, we'll go through some honorable mentions before the number one deck. So going into three, no, we'll do we'll do honorable mentions before the number one. Let's go into number three. Okay, okay. Number three. Uh, what do we have? Alrighty, number three we have Metagross. You want to talk a little about this one? I can talk about the um the uh I can talk a lot about Greninja since I made a list about that. But you you can talk um about Metagross and then some about Guardi and then I'll talk about the list and everything about that. Yeah. Yo, we should have had your brother come in here and explain Metagross. He's been doing so well at Cups with it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have that, but, uh, too late. Too late, yeah. But Metagross is a really solid deck right now. Um, of course it beats the number one deck, Guardi. As far as from day one, it did decent at the European Regionals. Um, it can honestly, Volk is pretty consistent, but it can sometimes dead draw. Maybe you can take one game off Volk and then somehow get lucky. I don't know. Play Austin's, like, Spice. He has a lot of Spice in his Metagross list, but he doesn't want to share it. <laughs> no, don't play that. Please. Don't play the Austin Spice. No, don't play Nine Tails on your list. Yo, that's a secret. Subscribers are gonna see what we're doing. <laughs> Yo, I think it's like ten now. Really? I don't know. I think it's like uh, last time I checked, it was like eight. Ten subscribers, man. Oh I think it's gosh. like eight. <laughs> Dude, it's close. We're rounding up to ten. Eight subscribers, whatever it is. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. Um, we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Do you guys just produce content for you guys? Show you how we test and. Uh, the local meta to get you prepared for tournaments and other events. So yeah, thanks for 10 subscribers. 10-ish. So <laughs> but yeah, go, go, going a little more through Metagross, it does good against Glissapod as well. Um, of course it smashes nine tails. Yeah. It's just a really solid deck overall. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it won. Uh, it's really good, as I said. It beats itself um, more than other decks beat it, though, I feel like. Yeah, I feel that, um... I feel that the deck can dead draw, and it can be inconsistent. Um, but if, it's, if it doesn't dead draw, uh, it's really good at beating everything else in the format. Yeah, definitely. So, and then going into number two, what is number two on the list? Number two is Garden War. Uh, right before we say this, correction, it's seven subscribers. Uh, thank you guys for seven subscribers. Last time I checked, it's eight. Someone must have hated our channel. Yo. Yo, we don't like hate mail, but we just brush it off our shoulders. Um, but yeah, our intro has 46 views. Wow, that's actually a lot for our subscriber base. So, um, it's really nice that we have people who watch this channel. You guys just smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, get more content, and turn on post notifications. <laughs> I sound like a, a Click the little word. bell icon, that way you get posted when we, that way you get notified when you, when we post a video. I can't talk today, blah, 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 blah. Do you want to join our free gift card giveaway? No. Like the video? Subscribe no. To our channel? We can't do that. I'm in a tough spot right now. No. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but number two, we have uh, Gardevoir. You thought it was going to be number one? Nope, he just got pranked. But um, it's not. It's number two. Here's the reason why. It loses to certain decks, and we feel that it's going to be bad for two reasons. One, Metagross is going to be crazy, po crazy popular. And number two. It loses to stuff that it shouldn't lose to, and it can get draw. For example, yeah. it will lose to our number one deck most of the time. That's what we're testing it. We're, we're not going to give away our number one deck yet. No, but like, it's very sus. But I think the correct version I played and I built for game and games and testing stuff as well is um, Max the, Potion. The Max Potion variant. The Max Potion variant is really good in the mirror. In the mirror, you want to be really conservative. The first person who attaches a DC, right? If they go DC, choice ban, fairy energy, swing for 120, you go, okay, I'll, with nothing on my guardy, right? Or one third in your guardy. You go, one, Max right? Potion, Secret Spring, DCE, choice ban, damage. Or you just go, okay, Max Potion, Secret Spring, DC, bench thing, so you're really conservative on your active. Yeah, true. And then you two shot them. Yes, the correct, the correct way is a two-shot, but you save so much hits, so that their wasted Guzma is just gone, and yeah. especially if it has something on it. I'm a bad Guardy okay. player, so. Yeah, but, um. I'm better at, like, big stage one decks and stuff. Yeah, matchup-wise, um, The reason why I feel like Guardy's not a good play is because no one's going to walk into a room with less than a 50-50 against it, I feel like. Yeah, um, it's so prepped for that. People know you're, they're going to tech for it, and you just have to be aware of that, you have to know that, and you have to be like, okay, I know that I'm playing Guardian, people in the room have tech for me, how can I play around that? And if you're comfortable with playing in a room where you know people know what you're playing, and people have text for you, then go ahead and play that. But if you want to bring in something that's different and has a chance of beating in those decks, uh, then you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, All right, so let's get into some honorable mentions. We did not discuss any of this before the video, so I'm gonna make these up on the spot. Ready, guys? Oh, so God. Zerny's break. All right, here's the problem with Zerny's break. It loses Reggie Rock. Reggie Rock was why the deck was good, but since it lost Reggie Rock, I don't think it's that good anymore. I feel like Reggie Rock was the way it had a decent shot against Metagross, and now it's just not good anymore. I feel like. No. Um, we're looking through a bin of cards. Let's yeah. see if we can find it. I, I still feel like Xerneas Break can be decent. Number two. Chandelure. Um, Chandelure is amazing. Chandelure, no. Okay, any other ideas for honorable mentions? Okay, I got this. This was, like, was once you going into top 8 at a League Cup. It's Scizoriax Zora Drampa. That's probably one of the good ones, but my honorable mention would be Quad Lapras. Okay. I think it's good. I think it's really good, actually. Okay, enough with the ridiculous honorable mentions. Everyone came here to see our number one secret saucy deck. Now, I know in the previous video for Hartford that we discussed um, different decks. This is our top ten list, but the previous video where Austin and I discussed different decks... I did say that the likelihood that I'd play this deck on a scale of 1 to 10 was a 1.5, but now it's my number two play. Blame I this man if I do bad. If I do badly, blame this man. Alrighty, so, drumroll, number one deck is... da 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 da, -da. Um, Greninja! Greninja. I built this list, going off of... A list from Omnipok, and the list has not dead drew me more than one time, and that's one time it was against Gabe. But it's actually a super shout out to Gabe. Card. You ready for this? It's Liddy. This card right here. Lily is Liddy. So the reason this card is good is the run four and four second more, of course. But Lily adds three more draw to your deck. So usually when you hold on supporters with Greninja. With this, you don't. With this, if you're going first, if you have five cards in the hand, right? You play Lily. Instead of just drawing two, you're going to go ahead and draw four cards. The next turn, you can get an N or a Sycamore or something else and draw more cards out of your deck. It's really good getting yourself in a position where you're like, oh no, I only have I only have one Froki out. And then you go, okay, I can attach Choice Band and then Lily for like four cards and hopefully hit a Brooklyn Hill or um, an Ultra Ball or some up. 
option to get a Pokemon. Yeah, also, a lot of people don't realize this, but if with certain hands, Greninja can burn a lot on the first turn. And in my testing, I've been able to Lily for like seven or eight cards. Yeah. Not eight, but seven. It's still good. Because if you have like an important like one or two cards that you want to hold on to, on turn one, you can Lily for a decent amount of cards and still hold on to those crucial things like a Frogadier or something for next turn. Yeah, especially like your Greninja Breaks and your Greninjas. Those are probably the things to hold on yeah. to. And the original thing I said, if I was convinced of a good Greninja list, I might play it. And this is a good Greninja list that doesn't lose to itself very much, and it's highly consistent. It's very good. Um, I think I might do a deck profile on this list, actually, on the channel. No. Um, Can you wait until after Hartford? Because I might play it. Fine, fine. I'll wait until after Hartford. Okay. I'll probably make it anyways, but, like, not play it until, like, uh, not, like, post it until, like, after Hartford. Um... But, like, the deck's really good. Um, I run a very consistent four splash energy in the deck. Yep. Um, All right. So I, th I feel like we should go over this. Matchups. If we go through the other nine decks that we've mentioned, let's see matchups. Okay, so number ten, Decidueye. That's bad, but no one's going to play Decidueye. It's a, it's a good play, but I don't think many people are going to no play it. No seniors have the smarts to play that risky and call him a deck because it's not good. Okay. Nine was ho -Oh Salazzle. It beats uh, that. It, 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 well, it's like 50-50. It's like 50-50. Yeah. What was number eight? Vika Number eight was Vika A lot of people don't realize this, but I did a ton of testing in this matchup. And Greninja 50-50 is Vika because you just Shadow Stitch. Yeah, and they can't do anything. Yeah, you just, shadow, you just goose mouth their Vika and Shadow Stitch. And then Giant yep. Water Shirt can bench Bulus. Yeah, I feel like people are too afraid to play Glissapod. It might see a little bit of play, but I don't think it'll see a ton. And then, um, what was, was Glissapod 6 or 7? Seven? 7. Number 6 was Volk. Okay, it smashes Volk. We smashes Volk. Far and away. Um, number 5, Night Tales. It's about 50-50. They play Tina promo. Just forget about the matchup. Um, number 4, Guard Variant. It has a very good guard matchup. Very, very good guard matchup. Yeah. You, cause um, if you're afraid about Garb too, you can play uh, the list with three field lore. Yeah. Um, number three is um, Metagross. That's such an easy matchup. Just Shadow Stitch them, and they can't do anything, and you win the matchup. Yeah, it's a pretty easy matchup. Guardy two, and Guardy Guard, Smash. Very similar. It's a very easy matchup. And number one, the ma mirror matchup. You want to play the mirror of this. Just Shadow Stitch them after, after, and after. It's going to come down to if you run Ranger or not. I don't run Ranger because I don't think it's fine as necessary. But, um, and seniors seniors or, usually won't have the guts. A lot of people don't have the guts to play Greninja. No. But I think it's a really smart play. And I think if you really want to go for the CP, you got to be bold and you have to make really good meta calls. I think this is going to be one of the biggest meta calls of the regionals we have here. Yeah. So... Lastly, let's just go into the top three decks, three, two, and one. What are your top three decks that you would play for Hartford if you were going? My top three, three, two, and one. Um, number three would be Metagross. Um, the sole purpose that beats Guardi, and it's just a good deck overall. I like Metagross with Tina with Tina promo. I think it's just good. Um, but can still lose stuff like Volk and can still lose stuff like Nine Tails if it's not played correctly. Um. Number two would be Gardevoir with Max Potions, um, since it's just so good at winning against basically everything except for Metagross and uh, Greninja. And then number one would be Greninja for me. It's just such a good deck, it beats what it needs to be. And at a large scale, on a regional scale, where most of the meta is going to be Metagross and Magardi, because no one's going to play uh, Ninetales out there. No people are going to play it. So, was that your three decks? I'm sorry, uh, was that two or three? That was three. Okay, sorry. Uh, I got, I was daydreaming for a sec. Oh my god. So, <laughs> I don't know. I needed to go over the excuse. Our seven subscribers won't care that I came up with an excuse. Nah. Even, even the one who hate, 
maybe the one who hated it and unsubscribed will care, but besides that. Nah, you're, they're going to punish you, fam. And then, uh, so my top three. Number three, Guardi with Max Potions. As we explained, it's good in the mirror, and if Metaros isn't popular, I'd be likely to play it. Two, Greninja, for all the reasons we just took, like, ten minutes explaining. And then my number one is, um, Metatoxic, which is the Necrozma, Drampa, Coco Spread, Espeon, Garbless. Garbin, Necrozma, Garbador, and friends. That's what they call the expanded tool drop version of it at, um, Fort Wayne. Oh, God. So, yeah, those are our decks. Um, before we go, any shout-outs? You wanna, you wanna give any shout-outs, Ethan? Um. No. <laughs> okay, I'll give the shout-outs in the words. This will take us out. In the words of Frank Diaz, shout out to my mom and Jesus. We'll see you guys in the next video.